Hello ladies and gentlemen, Ollie here, welcome back to the channel, and I'm going to go ahead and assume that if you've clicked on this video, you are about to sit the UK cat. Now this must mean that you are either a prospective medical student, a prospective dental student, or a massive nerd who enjoys taking difficult exams, and I commend you either way. But the UK cat contains a subtest called the Abstract Reasoning Subtest, and it's quite difficult, or at least a very large number of candidates find it very difficult. From any research you've done or past papers you've seen, I'm sure that you've seen something like what's in front of you right now. This is very typical of a Type 1 question on the UK CAT Abstract Reasoning subtest. There are actually four types of question, but Type 1 is the simplest to explain and the best way to get started, which is what this video is all about. So let's just explain what we've got going on in front of us. We have two sets of six boxes, labelled set A and set B, and then on the right hand side we have three test shapes. What we have to do is decide whether each shape belongs in set A, set B, or doesn't belong to either set at all. But how might we do this, because in effect it looks completely random. We could of course guess, and guessing either A, B, or neither, you'd have a 33% chance of getting the answer right. However, there's obviously a bit more to it than that. The way these questions work is that there is a series of rules that govern how the shapes are arranged in set A and set B, and these rules are consistent for all six boxes belonging to each set. There is a pattern, or multiple patterns, that hold true for every single box in each set, and it's our job to work out what those rules are so that we can then assign our test shapes to them. But how might we do that, I hear you ask, because surely there's almost an infinite number of rules that could apply to either of them. And that's true, of course, but these questions are designed by humans for other humans to solve. So the best way to start would be trying to identify some of those common factors, which is the perfect time to introduce our first element of the day, the SCANS method. Now this is a little acronym mnemonic device type thing that will help you structure your approach to the abstract reasoning subtest questions. So let's start with S. This simply refers to what shapes are present in each box. It could be circles, triangles, pentagons, anything you like. This will be highly dependent, but simply make a note of which are here. C is for colour. Is the colour of any shapes present relevant or consistent between the boxes, particularly in combination with the associated shapes? In this case, all of our shapes are white, so we can ignore this one for now. A is for arrangement, which is simply where in the box are the different shapes located. Now we can see just from a quick glance that the distribution is not uniform, so that might be something we want to look out for. N is for number, how many shapes of each type are there, how many sides do they have, and what is the total number of sides and right angles in each box. So this is going to be relevant for us, the number of sides is variable, the number of right angles is variable, so here are some things we can look for. And finally, S is for size. How does the size of each shape vary between the boxes, and does it correlate to colour, arrangement, or a conditional feature, such as the presence of another shape or the total number of sides in the box? So now we have scans in place, and we know what we're going to look for. Before we begin, Ignore the test shapes on the right. They will not help you because they don't tell you what the rules are. Always identify the rule before looking at the test shapes, otherwise they'll simply distract you. Now is a fantastic time to introduce our second method that will help you get used to this section, that is the simple squares method. You can see from a very quick glance at all six of our boxes that the number of shapes in each one is different. And while we don't know what the rule is that links them all, we do know that that rule has to hold true in all six boxes. So by concentrating on some of the simplest squares, namely this one and this one, we'll have to spend less brain power trying to work out what the rule is. From there you'd want to work to this right hand one and then the bottom right. But for now I'm going to work through all six to make sure you understand the methods that I'm using. So, starting in the top left corner, let's go through scans again. So the first S is for shape, we have a pentagon, and we have one circle. Now that's it. What about colour? Well, they're both white, so we're going to ignore that. Arrangement is a tricky one, we can see the pentagon is in the top left corner and the circle opposite it, that's a potential rule. 
but if you quickly glance at all the other squares, you will see that there are actually no other pentagons in set A, so it's rather unlikely that that's a rule. Now, number would be a good candidate here, so how many shapes of each type are there? We have one pentagon and one circle. How many sides do they have? Well, we have five sides on our pentagon, we have one side on our circle, so I'm just going to know in the corner that we have six sides in total, and there are no right angles. You might want to note that in a different one, but in this particular box there are no right angles. The final S would be size, and these two both appear to be approximately the same size, so I'm not really noting anything suspicious there. So let's move on to the second box. Once again, we'll go to shape, so we have one triangle, two triangles, and two circles. Moving straight ahead to arrangement, you can see that this is a little bit more interesting. The triangles and the circles are opposite one another. But again, if we look at all the other boxes, apart from the one immediately below us, this doesn't seem to hold true for the other boxes either, so we'll ignore arrangement again. So, now we've got number again, we've got three sides, one side, one side, three sides, so all in all that gives us eight sides for this box. So this has told us that the total number of sides is not constant between the boxes, so that eliminates that as a potential rule. And once again, in terms of size, everything looks approximately the same. So we'll move on to box number three, once again doing shapes, we have a semicircle and a square. The arrangement is not particularly interesting, but we do have our sides again in number. So two, four, and that has given us six sides in total. There are actually four right angles as well that we could observe here, but seeing as none of the squares we've looked at so far have right angles in, it's probably not relevant. And notice here that we now have two squares in set A that share the same total number of sides. That is interesting. Moving ahead to shape number four, we have a triangle, a circle, and a semicircle. We do have an arrangement here that looks quite similar to box number two, so we'll keep an eye on that mentally. But once again, we'll just go ahead straight to number, because that seems to be the only thing that's varying. So that's three, two, and three. That is six again. So what I'm going to do for the rest of these boxes is just analyse the shape and number elements of these, because they're the only ones that seem to be maintaining any sort of pattern. So moving ahead to box number five, we have three semicircles with a total number of sides of six, once again. And then moving to the final box of set A, we have a circle, that would write properly a square, and another circle, which gives us, once again, six sides in total for the box. So this should be leaping out at you. We now have six boxes, five of which have a total number of six sides, one of which is eight. So now I'm going to move to set B, and we're going to analyse all of these at once. So we have pentagon, pentagon, circle, square, circle, triangle, triangle, circle, semicircle, and triangle. So the number of sides, we have two lots of five is ten, plus one is eleven, we have four plus one is five, three, nine, five, and three plus two is five. So, something should have just become obvious. What we can see in this case is that in set A, the total number of sides is always even. It was either six or eight in one case. In set B, however, this number always seems to be odd. So now we have a potential rule in place, so let's finally move to our test shapes. I'm going to quickly mentally add up the sides and write them in each, so we have circle plus two in the semicircle plus one gives us four for test shape one. In test shape two, it's seven, four for the square plus three for the triangle, and it's finally one for the circle in test shape three. So now we have to assign each of these test shapes to the set. Test shape one has an even number of sides, so that is going to go in test shape A. Test shape 2 has an odd number, that's going to be in B. And test shape 3 is also odd, that one is also going to be B. And because I devised this question, ladies and gentlemen, I know that that's the correct answer. So if you'd followed these same steps and come to the same conclusion, you'd have scored full marks for this question.
So we've come to the end of this first video intended for absolute beginners with the UKCAT abstract reasoning subtest. We've introduced the general concept of how type 1 questions work, what you're expected to do, and two useful methods in scans and the simplest square method. If you'd like to practice using these two methods, I'm always adding new practice questions to my website at postgradmedic.com. Go to the articles page, look under entrance exams, and you'll find every single one of my example questions along with the answers. Please, please let me know if you found this video useful, and if you'd like me to do more worked through examples here on the channel. Thank you very much for watching, please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more free tips and guidance into getting into medical school, along with a blog of my daily life as a graduate entry medical student. Take care, and I'll see you in another video. Bye-bye.